I'm Luko and today I want to do a painting tutorial because I think painting seems really confusing but I think it's actually really simple. I actually recorded this video once before but I just didn't like how it came out. I feel like I could have made it simpler and I feel like I just talked too much so I want to redo it. I usually use these three brushes. The first one is a sketch brush. Use whatever brush you like um, that you use sketch with. It's it's whatever. And the second brush I use is a default round brush, or just like any brush that you can like kind of blend colors with. And the third brush is a paint and apply brush. Now this brush is really important. It helps you paint really easily, and it's really cool. If I find the link to it, I'll link it below because it's good. Another thing you need is pen pressure. I know a lot of people draw digitally. You, maybe they draw on their phone with their fingers. You need pen pressure for this. Pen pressure is very very important. And I'm not sure you can do it without it, um, but yeah, those are the, all the things you need. And now I'll get to the steps. I think the steps are just six inch or seven, six easy steps. So the first step would be to do the sketch and the line art. Two, we'll put the base colors. And three, you have to set the line art to multiply. And then four, it's a bit more complicated. Not really, it's really simple. It's just like a lot of steps on top of each other, but they're all very simple. And then five is like the actual painting, and then six is the shading or rendering. Um, and seven is just enjoy. It's really fun. I think this process is really fun and simple and cool. So here is my liner, as you can see. Uh, or is this sketch? You can do liner or sketch, as I said. This is my little sketch. Very cute. This is my OC Leaf, who I love. I love her. She's super cool. You want to add your base color. Now, I usually, for my base color, I usually do a neutral color, like this brown, but you can set your base color to anything, honestly, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, on top of this, you're gonna wanna put your actual colors, clip it, put it on top. You can also be a little bit messy, it's fine for now. So, now you have your base colors on one layer, under your sketch, you wanna set your line art to multiply. Super easy, you're already done with this step. And the next step, it looks complicated, but it's not. You're gonna wanna duplicate your base color, put it on top of your line art, clip it, and then set that to the screen. And after this, it's the next step, just painting. Okay, now I feel like this is where people get lost in translation a lot, like how to paint. So basically what you do is you take a darker color, usually I color pick it from the liner, and what I do is I go use my default round brush, and what I do is I just color and darken these lines. Um, this is why you need pen pressure because if you don't use pen pressure, the lines can seem very harsh and it won't have that painterly look, I guess. Kind of look like this, which, I mean, isn't the worst, but like, you can see it doesn't have that same feel. And as you darken these lines, it'll kind of start feeling like a painting. The other step to this step is to paint away lines. What you do is color pick your color, grab your default round brush, and you just paint away. So you just paint over the lines. So you can either make your art completely lineless, or you can add back lines. So usually what I do is I paint away the lines I don't like, and then I go to a darker shade, and then what I do is I just redraw the line basically. And that's how you paint. It's, it's literally that simple. And as you draw, and as you paint more, it'll look more like a painting, of course. Um, and I can show you what it looks like once I'm done. But as you can see, it already kind of looks more like a painting. But once I finish coloring and drawing on my lines, I will be back. Okay, so now when you're at this point where your drawing is completely painted, well not completely painted, but it's pretty painted, I will now show you how you add detail. Now, to do this, you have to already think of what background color you want, so, because we're gonna use the background color to paint. What that means is basically, so we kind of see how these edges over here are like um really messy and stuff basically what we're gonna do is take this background color and we're gonna paint the drawing so that we can erase the messiness and we can create details of this what you do is you just use the background to essentially create lines within the art to make it look more dynamic so like the hair it looks way cooler now just because of one line which is i think super cool um and over here we can add a little detail in the form over here as well we can add a little soupy soup and look wow so cute um and we can also clean up these edges over here like this and it already looks pretty cool shading or rendering so that is the next step um and i'll walk you through just basic shading um so what i usually do i usually start with the face so here's my paint apply 
I will go on my color wheel. I use a triangle color wheel. I used to use a square one, but I heard triangle is better. So I started using a triangle one and I got a hang of it pretty easily. Usually I go to skin color, I go slightly more orange. My color layer is on multiply. And basically what I do is I usually add shading to the cheeks first. I also add it to the ears and to the neck a little. Um, it just makes it feel more lively. Also turn the opacity down a little bit so it looks more natural. And I will now do my cell shading. For cell shading, you usually go back to the simple round brush. You, so you do all my shading done on the multiply layer. And I add shading to around the top of the hair, where it falls into the face. Also over here, I will also go back under the neck and under the clothes where the clothes fall down here. Usually I use the same color um, for like most of this. And this already looks pretty cute. And after this, after my cell shading, I will, I'll do the hair and I'll show you how I do hair. It's very simple. And I go back to my paint and apply brush and I just go all around on the hair like this. Which I just go in a circle-ish shape and I'll get my rough eraser and I will erase in kind of a circular motion like this. And I'll do like an, uh, like an upside down U shape for these parts. And that's it. I'll now uh, you just erase what's around the face. Depending on your art style, you can make this more bright or more dark. Depends on you. And I have some um, lighting to the hair. It looks pretty cool. The next step to coloring hair is I make the ends darker. What this means is that it kind of gives the hair more dimension because it looks like light is bouncing off it. It has more of a rendered feel. Uh, usually I do this in paint and apply as well. Usually I go, I set the layer to multiply. I'll get another reddish color and I'll just paint that darker color like this and it just gives the hair a lot more dimension and if you want to go a further step you can get a soft eraser and you can erase the bottom part of that shading it makes it look like the light is bouncing off it uh, you can also add some of that shadow to the top of the drawing up here that's all you have to do really um, that's all I do for hair. If I want to do a bit more, I can get a bit more extra, but you really don't have to. Um, and next would be clothes, which honestly follow a really similar pattern. Usually I go on multiply, uh, since this is more of a purplish color, I'll go do a more purplish color. And I will go on my paint and apply. Whoa, that's a bit too big. <laughs> I might just try on how I color clothes later. I'm honestly not that good at it. So what I do is I add the multiply shadow. I erase the edges a bit, like this. To get some shape um so it looks like there's form and i'll erase a bit of this and it just makes it look a bit more natural i don't like to make it too strong and then next you want to go on a normal layer i want to do like a little offish white you're gonna go back to your default round brush and you're gonna want to paint the edges a bit it just gives it some more shape and you want to turn that down a little and it just uh it gives it it gives the shape more form it's hard to see, but it's a small little, it's a little thing that just makes your art look more 3D, I guess. What I do next is, I guess, uh, rendering the face more. For the face, I will go on another multiply layer, go to a reddish purple or reddish orange, it depends. Um, since her, she has more purple in her character, I could do, usually do more purplish um, eye shading. So what you do is want to go on your dense watercolor, paint this in. It looks pretty harsh, but we'll fix it. Turn it down a bit. All right. So now that we turn the opacity down, we're going to take your rough eraser again and erase the edge. So it makes it look more natural. Um, and this is a trick I learned from like an eye tutorial that I found, but I never found it again. And so I just use like whatever mess, like whatever I remember from it. And next you want to go to this orange. I uh, want to go to like an orange color, a normal layer. You don't have to do anything special. Just a normal layer and an airbrush. And you're going to want to airbrush some red. Turn it down. And you're done. Uh, after this, I usually, um, in the face, I create hard and soft edges. What that means, so right now the face looks really soft, I'm gonna fix that. So I'm gonna color pick that reddish orange we put in her cheeks in the beginning. Take that and you wanna set the layer to multiply. So usually the place that I shade are the edges of the nose. That means um, you put it there 
and you want to blend it out with paint and apply that's why paint and apply is very important you can also add just more shading to the nose as well with paint and apply and what this does is it creates a hard edge now you can take your default your default you want to take your rough eraser you can erase among the edges here make it even sharper and it looks a bit stay right now so if you fix your nose <laughs> i didn't fix it earlier i should have it's fine But now it has this harsh edge. Usually I put harsh edges in more places, but since it's a more simple drawing, we won't get into it. So we kind of finished. We're done. This has been my paint drill. Now, if you really want to get into it, you can um, clean it up a bit more like over here, this edge. I forgot about it earlier. Um, I'll probably make another video of like coloring tips and what I do to get my colors how they are. But for now, this has been it. And I'm, I hope you guys learned a lot and I don't know if this was enjoyable. I hope it was. But yeah, that's it. This is my tutorial. Bye-bye.